to Stamford Bridge next, where Chelsea face last season's FA Cup winners Portsmouth. The Blues were looking to maintain an unbeaten home record that stretches back to February 2004. Luis Felipe Scolari was centre stage, having succeeded Avram Grant during the summer, and he knows what's required. Owner Roman Abramovich has made it clear only the title itself will do this season. No surprise to see Chelsea's newest signings, Jose Bozingua and Deco, make the starting lineup for this one. Nicolas Anelka was forced to play as a lone striker, following injuries to both Andrei Shevchenko and Didier Drogba, plus the absence of Salomon Kalou, who's on Olympic duty. A buzz around Portsmouth following the signing of Peter Crouch, who was back at the club after a seven-year absence. He partnered Jermaine Defoe up front with Eunice Kabul, another debutant. So could Big Phil's Chelsea live up to the pre-season hype? Commentary from Gary O'Reilly and Steve Banyard. It's Deco. Jabbed on by Balak. Chance here for Cole! Cole with the goal for Chelsea! What a great start for Scolari. Portsmouth, for me, don't hold a line good enough. And then Cole pulls off the defender, and it's good night from there on, as far as I was concerned. As soon as Cole goes, it's off the shoulder of Campbell. This had nothing else but goal written all over it. Chelsea manager with a smile on his face. Now Lampard. Oh, a little stumble, but they've recovered. It's Anelka. James with the save. Tight angle for Anelka, but uh, there's a little hint of offside, but uh, he's on, Campbell plays him onside, Horidison too, tries to go across him, but David James is a big frame to get around. Already plenty of evidence about Deco, Lampard, Balak, all getting forward to uh, help Anelka. Andrew Balak almost in the way there, Anelka nods it in for number two. And Chelsea are all over Portsmouth right now. It's good physical presence from Anelka. You can see him moving towards the ball there. Now he reads. He doesn't stop when it goes back. He's up there. Determination gets that goal for him. A bit disappointed in Glenn Johnson. We've expected more out of him. But it's power from Anelka. A dream start for Luis Felipe Scolari. And Elka, oh, he's jabbed it around James, and he's a little bit unlucky there. He's hungry. Just unlucky, because he almost gets the ball before he runs across the face of the goal. <laughs> oh, is that handball? Heinzman oh. says yes, referee gives the penalty, given against De Stamp. Mo Matadar is the assistant referee, and it's off the left forearm of Sylvain Distat. Penalties were the undoing of Chelsea at the end of last season, but a chance for Frank Lampard to give Chelsea a 3-0 lead going into the break at the start of the new season. Chelsea through and through. Sends David James the wrong way. Frank Lampard's on the score sheet for the season already. Uh, Scolari must wonder what all the fuss has been about. Premier League larks easy. Roman Abramovich has to be very happy with this new era underway at the bridge today. And here's the chance for number four, Joe Cole again going for the angle. See, because he's quite central, Cole's got a concern. Does he go across James, or does he try and open up that space around the outside? Harry Redknapp perhaps with a, a bit of a reshuffle to uh, undertake here. And I just wonder whether the single completes one of the, if not the best quartet defensively. Crouch, Crancher. Oh, is that not a handball? Carvalho says no. Yeah, but he would do, wouldn't he? Certainly worth a shout, bearing in mind the uh, penalty at the end of the first half. Absolutely. Deco. 
Fancies one himself. The perfect start for the Portuguese playmaker. And that just about wraps up the perfect afternoon for Chelsea. Would you deny him this? Portsmouth sit off. He knows what he wants. David James will be disappointed. He's allowed something to go in from that distance, but it is superb strike. Just too hot to handle. He'll be pretty satisfied. He'll still be unhappy that they didn't drive home their advantage of the first half. 4 0 is. It's, it's important, but uh, more important that I see uh, my team well in the field. And I think the fans for Chelsea like the same, same me. And three points, it's important. The top four, whichever way you look at it, especially Chelsea, Man United, I think they're, they're very, very difficult to, uh, to compete with. Anyone coming here today, first game of the season, would have had big problems. It's only a start. But what a great start for Chelsea under Scolari. Absolutely fantastic. Unbeaten at the Emirates for 16 months, Arsenal were expected to be celebrating against West Brom. It's coming soon. As you'd expect, the KC Stadium was heaving. Few genuinely believe this would ever happen. Some have been around a long time, hoping it would. Survival is the name of the game for Phil Brown, whose signings include Brazilian attacking midfielder Giovanni, George Boateng from Middlesbrough, and former Spurs defender Anthony Gardner. All three made their debuts. Fulham manager Roy Hodgson has brought in ten fresh faces. Four players made their debuts, including Hungarian Zoltan Gira and ex-West Ham striker Bobby Zamora. Record signing Andy Johnson was missing with a thigh strain. It was the home team who came out of the blocks firing on all cylinders. Only three minutes had passed when Giovanni had a header superbly saved by Mark Schwarzer, who then combined with John Pansil to block Ian Ashby's follow-up. Almost, but not quite, the dream start. Fulham's new-look defence hanging on, just. Hull's early promise was short-lived, though, and the visitors responded when Jimmy Bullard swung over a perfect cross for Sol Ki Hume. The Koreans' first goal for Fulham after signing from Reading a year ago. Midway through the half, Fulham nearly doubled their lead. Simon Davis with the volley from another Bullard cross. Hull was starting to get a taste of what life is like at the highest level. Their response was perfect. Giovanni picked up a loose ball inside the Fulham half, drove forward and finished in style for an historic strike. The Brazilian only started three matches for Manchester City, but the Hull fans have an instant hero. Their longtime favourite, Dean Windass, who was on the bench, would have been proud of that one. So one all at half time. The second half carried on where the first left off, with Nicky Bambi creating another opening for Giovanni. This time, though, the finish was rather different. Fulham's defence ripped apart. Giovanni finding plenty of space. The people of Humberside were gearing themselves up for a fairy tale finish, and it duly came courtesy of a nightmare error from Paul Koncheski, who allowed Craig Fagan to set up fellow substitute Caleb Folan. A simple finish for the 25 year old, and a sensational end to Hull's first game at this level in their 104 year history. Phil Brown knows it's only a start but he couldn't have been happier. The spirit in the, in the changing room, again, was there for everybody to see. The fitness, fitness levels, again, was there for everybody to see. And if we maintain them two things all season and the quality comes, then it's a recipe for success. But as you say, one, one swallow doesn't make a summer, is that right? <laughs> we'll see. To say Hull are living the dream would be an understatement. Following their meteoric rise to the Barclays Premier League, Phil Brown's boys are giving off all the signs that they're here to stay, and few of the Sunday papers could disagree. The Sunday Mirror has nothing but praise, saying they may be about to give a metaphorical kicking to those who wrote them off as relegation fodder. 
The News of the World describes their first top flight win as their first steps to the promised land of the Premier League and that they played like they'd been there forever. Well, the Daily Star labelled it the stuff that dreams were made of, a day to remember for everyone involved at Hull. Next stop, a tricky away test at Blackburn. But going on this performance, Paul Ince's side won't have it all their own way. The Tigers have already bared their teeth. Another season of great expectation for Liverpool began at the Stadium of Light. Sunderland avoided relegation last season, but Roy Keane's men lost all eight fixtures against the big four clubs and failed to score in seven of them. The Black Cats have strengthened the squad for their second season in the top flight. Three former Spurs players, Pascal Shimbonda, Steve Malbronk and Timu Tainio made their debuts, along with ex-Liverpool striker Al Hadj Juf, who joined from Bolton. Skipper Steven Gerrard returned for the Merseyside club after missing the midweek Champions League qualifier. There was a Premier League debut for Italian left-back Andrea Dossena and a new foil for Fernando Torres, £20 million man Robbie Keane. There had been speculation manager Rafa Benitez could quit if the board failed to sign Gareth Barry. The Spaniard insists he's staying. Commentary comes from Paul Walsh and Alan Parry. Mihuclia beaten to the header, he's preferred to the much younger Daniel Aga, and that was a poor back pass, he's given it away to El Hadstu, who was caught by surprise, and just as well for Sammy Hukia and Liverpool he was. But Juve had to take it straight away, because as soon as he takes it, took that touch, he was going to be under severe pressure, and that's exactly what happened. That's one into space for Juve, but he's let it run on. Good well to make the cross there, Hukia heads clear, unconvincingly again, Richardson goes down under the challenge. Referee's allowed it to go on, Jukes crosses, dangerous! And Reina scramble that one away from Murphy. Got away from Richardson, he came flying in, got in the blocking again. The ball in from LH Jukes and Murphy, that's a great chance. Torres still in there. It's come out to Keane, clever skill from Keane. Oh, great effort. That was a great effort under severe pressure, but had the presence of mind. It's a clearance comes to news. Going to have to sort it out very quickly. Well, we saw in the flash there just why Rafa Benitez was so keen. If you pardon the fun to sign Robbie. Robbie moving the ball more swiftly at the start of the second half. Arbelo and Kaut combining cleverly. On to Ben Ayoun. He can hit the ball with that right foot of his. And pushed away by Craig Gordon to Keane. Sunderland have had a lucky escape. Uh, it's much better play from Liverpool. Just crisper, more incisive passing, better movement. Still not the cleanest of strikes. Gordon had to go down and make the save. Now, this could be interesting. He knows it. Chimbonda's challenge right on the edge of the box on Yossi Benayoun has given Liverpool a free kick in a really dangerous position. And it just goes down the back of his ankle and calf. Playing for one. 21 goals for Liverpool last season. Just one more at the start of this season could well give them their first win. That's not to be it. Alonso. Arbeloa. Kaut. A feeble effort, but it's come out. Oh, and Torres and King got in each other's way. Uh, it takes a deflection, and that makes it hard for Gould. He gets a left hand down, and as Torres looks for the simplest of touches in, he actually kicks it onto Robbie Keane. Minutes to go in the Barclays Premier League. Sunderland nil, Liverpool nil. Xabi Alonso. Oh, an outrageous oh. effort by Xabi Alonso. It's not the first time, of course, he's done that. He has scored some spectacular long-range goals in his time at Liverpool, and that was almost another from his own half. Well, you're looking a very relieved Craig Gordon there. He was scampering, he didn't know where it was.
Luis Torres hasn't had a sniff of goal yet. However, he has scored with his first opportunity of the game, and that's what sets him apart from the rest. One chance, one goal, and maybe three points for Liverpool. It's a great ball from Alonso. 20, 22 yards out, and it's right inside the post. Great pace on it. And he's, he's not really been in the game, has he, Torres? But you're right, that is what sets him apart. And Liverpool's uh, domination of this second half has been rewarded to their delight. We knew that it would be a tough game. We knew that uh, it's a good team with uh, new players, with quality, and also a physical team, so it was really difficult. But we knew also that we needed to, to be patient and keep... Uh, Passing and controlling uh, the ball if it was possible. The second half was much better for us. Again, I'm delighted with my own players' performance today. We had chances, um, and it was important that you know if we were to get a result today, that when we got them chances to take, and we didn't. And as you said, players like Torres, you know, 20, 25 yards out. If you don't close them down, as soon as he left his foot, obviously you knew it was going to be a goal, and uh, and that's why they cost 30 million pounds. Predicting the fortunes of Tottenham Hotspur at the start of the season is a hazardous business. Big money has been spent, but are they ready to mix it with the top four? Gareth Southgate is excited by the potential of his young squad and has promised a positive approach from Middlesbrough this season. His two major summer signings, Didier Diga and Marvin Emnes, were both on the bench. David Wheater played at left-back, with Justin Hoyt not yet eligible to play. Dimitar Berbatov still looks certain to leave Spurs before the end of the month. The unsettled Bulgarian international was on the bench. Mexican Giovanni Dos Santos was preferred up front alongside Darren Bent, who's been in a rich vein of goal-scoring form during the summer months. Luka Modric made his long-awaited debut alongside fellow new boy David Bentley. Juan de Ramos is confident that the arrival of quality players like Modric means his new-look side has all the credentials to be a force at the top. Watching this one were Barry Horn and Gary Weaver. Jonathan Woodgate making sure the Middlesbrough fans can get the booze out of their system. He's done well. This is Giovanni. Loves to run with the ball, Giovanni. Bent to his left, so too Bentley. It's David Bentley away from Wita. Almost a terrific goal. Yeah, nice run from Giovanni. Here's the run inside. Left foot, left foot, just a little touch there. I think Bentley would have liked that ball to come to him just a little slower on the floor and he could have whipped it first time. Sunshine, it's a great touch. Alves there for support if he needs him. It's Alves, he's onside, but he's missed it incredibly. Well, it's only a few moments ago we were talking about his fantastic goal scoring record. What a miss that is. Well, Gareth Southgate has now assembled his own team here, his own squad. Just two of the starting 11 here for Middlesbrough today started his first game in charge two years ago. And with your own team and your own squad come the pressures. Yeah. This is Lennon, Zakora on the overlap here. Two in white in the middle. Goes in towards Bentan Giovanni, and that really could have gone anywhere. As it is, it will be a corner to Tottenham. That's better from Spurs, the corner this time. Plenty of time and space, and he whips that ball in behind the defence. And then also... This is Ali Adier. Hasn't had too many chances to run in this game so far. Now it's Alves. This is Downing, three are in the middle. It's towards Alves. Woodgate yeah. finds his own fans. Still big friends with a few of these Middlesbrough players, Jonathan Woodgate. Of course, he only left, what, eight months ago. And within the month, won a trophy with Tottenham. Oh, and Tottenham caught out. David Waiter scores for Middlesbrough. It's not being given. It's being ruled out. And, po and uh, Waiter saying to the referee, well, actually, it was me that was fouled. And I think he might have a case there. The arm's up. He's got every right to try and get round that. I think that's a harsh decision. No TV to look at anymore in the dugouts for Gareth Southgate. Downing will get another chance. 
Still plenty forward, Alves with a flick off the bar. And turning, David Waiter gets his goal. Middlesbrough lead. Unbridled joy at the Riverside Stadium. They will feel they should have scored in the first half. They've definitely scored now. Well, they haven't really dealt with the clear in the lines well all afternoon, Spurs. Here it comes straight back in. Low, hard cross. Near post, fantastic touch from Alves. And we are just anticipating. Happy to smash it home. Lovely touch to the outside of the foot. I'm not sure if Gomez actually made a great save there. Seems to get a touch on it. Middlesbrough have got the breakthrough. Oh, Sally Adia. Play waved on. O'Neill. Oh, Middlesbrough on the verge of a second goal here. This is Digar who can hit them. Oh, and turned in. It's Mido. It just had to be him. He comes back to haunt his former club. The new leaner, Mina Mido, has struck on opening day. Good break, good passing to O'Neill. It looks here as if the move's broken down, but then all of a sudden, a run from Digar. OK, the shot's not that great, but it's in the danger area, and Mido reacts first. Back of the net, game over. Final minute of stoppage time. Tottenham looking for a consolation, anything to hang on to. Going into the second game of the season. Oh, and almost an own goal, it is an own goal. Jones beaten by his own man, David Wheater, second goal of the game, this time, wrong end. Well, it's been a mixed afternoon for him, hasn't it, to say the very least. Better ball in from Bentley, flatter, pacier, and Wheater's stretching to deal with it, and all he can do is help it past Brad Jones. He's got to be looking now towards the next game, he's got Sunderland at home. That's a, that's a must win for him. Well, we play to win every game, like you said before, we came here to win it and we put the, the team to, to win the game. Um, I would like to say it's not like how you start, it's how you finish, so we see at the end of the season. It's a, a great start for us, we needed that because I think, uh, I don't remember winning uh, in my time here on the opening day of the season, so um, hopefully that gives everybody some belief in what we're doing. For Middlesbrough, it's an opening day victory. For Tottenham, it's back to the drawing board. An eye-catching start to the season and a tough call as far as the pick of the week is concerned. Hull's winner against Fulham came close, as did Greta Steinson's thunderbolt against Stoke, even if there was an element of good fortune to it. But we had to go for Gabriel Agbon Lahore and his superb seven-minute hat-trick, making him the villain's hero. From Dave Beckett, me, Marcus Buckland, and all the team on the Barclays Premier League Review Show, see you next time. <laughs>